Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be doing a quick overview on the record and stream tab found in the Radeon settings driver dashboard. So this is the dashboard that you get when you install the Radeon drivers for any sort of Radeon GPU like the 7800 XT that we recently reviewed on the channel. So if we go here to the record and stream tab, you have record, live stream, scene editor, media, and settings. So the record tab is what it sounds like. It is for recording footage of either a game or an application. You could also simply just record the desktop. Like if you, for example, if you wanted to make a quick pose or how to do something in the operating system, you could use this to do a desktop capture or screen capture just straight from the driver dashboard. So I think that's really convenient that it's built in like this. Of course, you could do game recordings. I have one here that I was testing earlier. So this is Liza P in the background for those that were curious. But then we also have the live stream tab, which you can do. You can basically use this to live stream to any of the major content provider sites. In fact, you could you could use this to live stream to any website that uses kind of the RTMPS standard in terms of the stream key and the custom URL. So for example, in the drop down here, they have YouTube, Twitch, Stage 10, Facebook, Restream. You know, Kick is missing from this list, but if you want to stream to Kick, you just use leave it on custom stream, put your stream URL and then the stream key for your channel on Kick, and then you would just work just fine like that. So no different from OBS or other standalone third-party software applications that are used to do the exact same thing. So it's nice to have the option to do it built in to this dashboard. So there's the go live button there. If you want to capture the microphone, a specific microphone or camera, you can set that up. We'll look at that in a little bit. The chat also would show up here if you have your channel connected here. Um, obviously, I have nothing in the stream URL, so I have no chat here. Just as a demonstration here, we're offline with no viewers, but it shows your viewer count on the bottom right. It shows the status of the stream, whether it's online or offline as well. And then at the very bottom, it has the amount of time, the elapsed time since the stream started. So that's really cool. You have a refresh button here too as well. So for example, if the internet was buffering or you had some kind of internet upload problem, you could refresh the stream this way. So it has a lot of that built in directly to the, the dashboard here, which I really like that. So next we have the scene editor. So this is going to be where you decide to put, for example, the camera. So if you're gonna be in the bottom, right of the stream or here over the top here or somewhere here in the middle or whatever. So it supports all that stuff in terms of the webcam and then the chat overlay as well. That could be overlaid and you could choose where to put that on the screen in terms of the X, Y coordinates, how big or tall the box is going to be, the font size, etc. So it's nice to have all of this functionality. I'm actually quite surprised that it has all of this built in. The media tab has any kind of your your channel branding or logos or sponsor logos, etc. If you wanted to have that included here, so you could put that into the scene editor and import that as well as an element on the screen. And then any sort of recorded clips or videos that would also be found here. And then the settings tab is where you set up things like the actual resolution that you're going to stream at, the FPS, the bit rate, and then also the media location to save kind of the backups or the archives of the stream, any sort of GIF files or instant replays, in-game replays. Some of that's more for the recording side, but you can integrate that into the streaming. So on the left side here, this entire section on the left is the recording settings and then the upper right is for live streaming and then the media down here is kind of the instant replays, the instantly generating a GIF file. So having that functionality built in is very good. If we go to the recording settings, you can record desktop or application. So if you just wanted to do a capture of a game application, you could do that. The recording profiles, they have some pretty decent ones. So low is going to be 720p60 at 5 megabits per second. The audio, you can raise this up or down depending on what you want. It goes all the way up to 320, which is kind of the most crispy audio in terms of the clarity. But I think 192 is good. And then if we go to medium, medium profile, the recording resolution is in-game at 10 megabits per second and high profile is 30 megabits per second. 
So you could do in-game or you could choose a downscale resolution. For example, if you were playing the game natively at 1440p, you could save the video recording to 1080p to save on file size. But that's totally up to you. It's fully customizable. Record at 4K, for example, you could do that and you could set the bitrate to something appropriate for 4K60, like 50 megabits per second, for example. So it's all built in. The video encoder, here's where it's a little bit interesting, so it's worth noting that if you have a Radeon 7000 series GPU, you gain access to the AV1 encoder, so that's where that setting is. If you do not have a, an RDNA 3 GPU, you would only have AVC or HEVC as the options there. Audio channel, typically that's just going to be left on automatic. The record microphone, you would set that up. The record volume level, etc. Push to talk can be enabled, audio boost can be enabled if needed. For the live streaming, it's pretty straightforward. Low is for very low bit rate. They're saying 720p 30, but if I was gonna do 720p 30, I'd probably do 720p at four Mbps. I think that's the right number. Now, the thing is they have kind of some pretty good presets, but I think that these presets are designed around twitch.tv. So if you go up to ultra, ultra is the 1080p 60 with six megabits per second you would just follow the preset depending on what you want. You can also play around with it and do some tests to see what the image quality looks like. And then lastly, the enhanced filtering. This is a feature for the AVC. So if you're using H.264, so typically a lot of sites today still do not allow you to stream in AV1 let alone HEVC. This will help improve the image quality. It is changing some toggles in the H.264 encoder. That's actually what it's doing. And if you want to archive, and then the media, you know, where are you going to save all the archive files and the instant GIFs and the replays and that sort of thing. So overall, it's a pretty nice solution. It's nice that it's all in here and you don't have to log in. So I really like what they have here because it's very convenient from a usability standpoint. So hope you guys found this video useful and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.